So you're you're kind of like Batman or something. <laughs> I like the Dark Defender. And that that makes the Dark Pastor not push so hard. Hey guys, Pete here. I've got another short Dexter New Blood video today about some answers that the writer-producer Scott Reynolds offered up in some interviews he gave about episode 9, which he has the writing credit on. I wasn't planning on making another New Blood video before the finale, but I was out of the house all day yesterday and I listened to a couple of podcasts he was on, and he gave some definitive answers to some questions I've seen coming up in the comments from you guys. He talked about the choice they made with ketamine, confirmed who sent Angela the envelope with the screws, whether the bartender was in one of Kurt's cases, and even Hannah came up, so there were a lot of big questions that were answered. I'll tell you everything I picked up right after this quick spoiler warning. If you don't want to know the answers to the questions I just mentioned, then this video won't be for you. This is not my speculation about these things, it comes directly from the writer's room on the show, and now you have been warned. And with that out of the way, let's get into it. I guess to get the one big question I saw the most out of the way right up front is why did the show link the Bay Harbor butcher case to the ketamine Dexter uses in New Blood? He explained why they decided to use ketamine in the new show. He was in a small town, it was a question of what he would have access to, but also Michael C. Hall's band had this song ketamine and they wanted to use it in the show. That all checks out and seems fine, but why then create this connection that when Angela went looking, she would discover things that pointed her to the Bay Harbor Butcher case considering that everyone who watched the original show knows that he didn't use ketamine, he used M99. The answer here was not as satisfying. He said the research is from an aggregate website with clues people have speculated about over the years. He also cited real life cases where M99 and ketamine got mixed up or was misidentified, especially in older bodies that were discovered years later. So the actual website she found was nothing official, and that is clear when you look at it. And the reason it showed up in the search result was because it was listing tranquilizers like ketamine and M99, and that's why she got the hit. And at the end, he added that he hopes that we can live with it, because that's why they did it. It's good to know that they at least thought it through, and you can decide whether or not you want to accept that. Normally, after every episode of New Blood, I listen to the official wrap-up podcast that Scott Reynolds hosts as soon as that comes out. He's been involved with the show since the beginning, and you can tell he is dedicated to his job, he loves the character, and is passionate about making both the original show and New Blood. He posts a lot of great behind-the-scenes photos on Twitter and Instagram, and I'll put links to his accounts in the description because you'll want to give him a follow if you aren't doing that. On his podcast this week, he interviewed Clancy Brown, and there were a few interesting details that came out. He mentioned that the writing that was by the camera that said you're already dead was left there by a previous victim. And when he was talking to Clancy Brown, they made it sound like Kurt was legitimately proud of what he's done whenever he reacted that way to Harrison and Dexter asking him about it. I still feel like him being that eager to take credit for doing all of it alone seemed kind of suspect, but the actor made it sound like it wasn't important. The other thing they talked about here and across all the podcasts really was the importance of Dexter presenting what he does in the best possible light to Harrison. He compared the Wiggles kill to the first kill we see in episode one and how they both have the kind of victim that no one feels sorry for. This is a choice that Dexter made and the show made itself whenever it introduced us to him in the pilot. And they talked about how he was struggling with the truth. At first it was just about whether to tell him everything and then changing the details in some of the situations like how he told him he killed Trinity because of what he did to Rita instead of how that really happened. So I guess pay attention to whether Harrison is getting the truth or he's getting the story that Dexter wants him to hear. 
As far as direct answers, Scott was interviewed on the Fanatics podcast, which I'll link to in the description. That's actually co-hosted by David Magadoff, who plays the role of Teddy on the show. On there, Scott confirmed that Kurt did send the screws to Angela, and he said that in the writer's room, they didn't even try to make that a mystery or think that fans would interpret it that way. They wanted it to play like Kurt's last F.U. to Dexter. Then the other podcast that had a lot of questions and answers was Dissecting Dexter, which has been around for a long time and I think is rather popular. On there, we learned that Batista is actually remarried. There was a question about him wearing a wedding ring in the scene with Angela, with some fans speculating that it might be the same one he had since he was married to La Guerta. Scott said that he is remarried and that they actually wrote a whole scene where he would be sitting with his family at the dinner table when Angela called him, but production got in the way of that happening. And this isn't 100% clear if it was something that would have happened earlier and then it was just cut, or if this is something that's upcoming that Angela will call Batista, but he won't be in a room with his family when that happens. Another question that he was kind of surprised that fans had was whether Tess, the teacher and bartender, who became unwittingly involved in Kurt's ritual when he came into the tavern to dance with her. Fans thought that they recognized her in one of the cases, and that turned out to not be true. He said that he killed Molly because she was a threat, and of course we know he went after Harrison for revenge, but otherwise they said that Kurt would never go after anyone from the town. Another question that he was asked that I see a lot was that Angela seemed so obsessed with Dexter now that she's forgotten about the missing girl cases that she was into for so long. He explained that the writers actually think that she believes that his dad killed Iris. And now she's actually just more focused on the problem at hand that this guy that she's led into her life intimately, who's been a part of her life for over two years, might be a lot darker than she could have ever imagined. He also addressed the theory that Harrison could have killed Hannah before he left Argentina. He said it was the exact opposite, that she really took good care of him, so it was a tragedy when she died and he had to enter the foster care system. Harrison had hurt people just like he claimed, and we saw him do in Iron Lake, but he never killed anyone before he got there, including Hannah. He also had a reaction when he heard the term Chekhov's gun applied to the one that Dexter gave to Harrison. He didn't elaborate on why that got him excited. And the host of Dissecting Dexter brought up the theory that was out there that Harrison might kill himself with it. And of course he wouldn't confirm anything. What it sounds like, and it's not a great surprise, is that that gun will be important in the finale. And you could think of multiple ways that could play out. The last thing that I'll talk about, and what I thought was probably most interesting because it was still speculative, was talking about how Harrison actually felt when he was watching the kill and the dismemberment of Kurt Caldwell. They said in the writer's room they wanted the feeling to be that you can't actually read how Harrison felt about it. He was triggered by the blood because he was reminded of Rita, and that's similar to what happened to Dexter when he went into the hotel room back in season one, but they also wanted to show that he's not as bad as Harry who vomited and ran away. Harrison is in a place where he still loves his dad and at this point he wants to please him. So he used the word inscrutable here. They wanted his reaction to be something that you couldn't tell for sure what was going on. He said it's more about himself than what Dexter's doing, but you know they're intertwined, so we'll see where Harrison goes from here. So I think I can leave it there. That was some interesting stuff, so I wanted to pass it on. The links to all the podcasts and everything else are in the description. I recommend that you listen to them for yourself because there's a lot of stuff that I left out. Let me know in the comments how you're thinking about the finale how you think it'll end or what do you think there's only a couple days left so please like this video if you enjoyed it please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and thanks for watching i'll talk to you soon